have a brief introduction of you first before we start. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we have, it's a great honor to have Professor Shu Yuan Zhang to give us a talk. I will have a very brief introduction of, he, of her. So she has some working experience in Hong Kong University and also National University of Singapore and also Clemson University. Now he, she is a professor in Nand Uni University. So her research work is about um, material development and also the process development for water pollution control. So I think she's the, her group is the only group who is working on UVAA process. So tonight she will give us um, her research work in this area. So please, welcome. Uh, thanks, Xin, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. It's my great pleasure to have such a chance to present some of our work here the topic of my presentation today is application potential of the UVA process in water treatment. I'm Shu Jian Zhang from the Nanjing University. In this lecture, I will talk about three questions. Uh, first, what is AA? And what can we do with AA? And how does AA work in water treatment? I bet many of you are not fam not familiar with these two terms, acetyl acetone or small molecular diketones, but you must know the two terms, norm or DOM, natural organic matter or dissolved organic matter. DOM is an important electron shuttle in nature because of the crinal structure. As shown in this figure, because of the reversible electron and the proton transfers between the crinal structure and the hydrocrinal structures. The electron transfer mediated by crinals is important in life processes, such as photosynthesis or respiration. These processes are also important in the fate and the transport of contaminants, uh, as illustrated in this figure. In chemistry, we know the structure determines properties. If we compare the structures of diketones with crinals, we can find some similarities between them. Here are the three diketones we have studied, including 2,3-butane dion, we abbreviated it as BD, 2,4-pentane dion, that is uh, AA, and 2,5-hexane dion, abbreviated as HD. These three diketones are the three simplest alpha, beta, and gamma diketones. We, uh, we pay special attention to AA because of its two totemous structures, ket ketone and the enol. And the enol structure, the enol structure uh, can ha has a good chelating agent. It can complex with met many transitional metals. Uh, for the current application of AA, we can find wide application as precursors in synthesis. Their metal complexes can be used as catalyst in organic synthesis, and it can be used as analytical reagent and also as solvent and additives. Diacetyl and 2,3-pentane diol are normal products of yeast metabolism occur naturally in all brewery fermentations. However, as Xin introduced, there are no reports of the application of AA in water or wastewater treatment until we did some work on it. Therefore, I have ever wondered, are diketones sleeping beauties in science? Uh, here are the studies that uh, we so far have done on AA including uh, three uh, systems, photochemical system, enzymatic system, and some dynamic system. What I uh, present tonight is mainly focused on the UVA process and the coagulant uh, composed by titanium and AA. I bet you might be curious, how did AA catch our attention? 
uh, TiO2 is a well-known photocatalyst. The soil gel process is a typical method for the preparation of TiO2. I tried to prepare TiO2, but I stopped at the zero gel stage. I put the zero gel into a uh, as a dye solution. After turn on the UV light for uh, some time, we found the solution became colorless. So does this mean the solution was degraded? No, because after we uh, turn off the UV light, the color of the solution came back. That means this is a photo-induced sorbent process. This process is not only reversible, but also repeatable. After a series of uh, factorial experiments with instrumental analysis, we proposed it's the anchored AA in the TiO2 zero gel played the important role in the photo-induced absorption. On the UV irradiation, the anchored AA in the TiO2 skeleton, the bond between them was broken and generating new absorption site for the dyes. After the UV light was off, because of this structure is unstable, it rebounded again. This phenomena is just like the water name, which blooms in the day and close at night. So when we do the photo-induced absorption, we also observed another phenomenon. Sometimes we cannot uh, completely recover, recover the uh, dyes. That is, some of the dyes were degraded in the UV irradiation process. Uh, this led to the investigation on the UVA process that we uh, turn the study on the anchored AA from the, to the free AA. Here is a uh, alizarin red. Uh, it's an anthraquinone dyes. When we adjusted its solution from pH 2 to 12, we can find beautiful colors from yellow to red to purple. After the addition of the same molar concentration of hydrogen peroxide and AA, and on the UV irradiation for 10 minutes, we can find there is only slight light change in the UV hydrogen peroxide system. However, for the UVA system, if the initial solution pH was lower than 9, the solutions became colorless. The UVA process is much more efficient than the UV hydrogen peroxide for the colorization. We also compared the UVA process with UV TiO2, as shown in this picture. The UVAA is thorough in the colorization. And in terms of kinetics, the UVA process is rapid, and interestingly, it shows self-accelerated kinetics with the proceeding of reactions. Uh, so far, we have uh, already tested about 60 dyes. We found the AA works better than hydrogen peroxide for most of the dyes. And we also sampled 10 real test tie with water from local companies, as shown in this figure. With the addition of H2O2, the decolorization efficiency is uh, only slightly increased. Some of them are negligible, but with the addition of AA, the decolorization is significantly enhanced. So both the underlying mechanism behind the high efficiency, based on the limited uh, literature, literature research on the food chemistry of AA, there is the possibility to generate hydroxy radicals, which is the most strong oxidative radicals, and the acetyl radicals. Besides that, we also check the possibility of single-lit oxygen and the superoxide anion. We compared the quantum yield of AA with H2O2. The quantum yield of 
it, uh, it hydrogen peroxide at 254 nanometer is why this is well known in the literature. The quantum yield of AA is much lower, only about 0 0.116. The H2O2 can generate strongly oxidative hydroxy, hydroxy radicals with a high yield, but why it should low efficiency in the photochemical process. So this reminds me a Chinese idiom, paradox. That is to say, a man was selling his shield and spear in the market. He lifted up his shield and said, this is the hardest shield in the world. Nothing can penetrate it. And then he lifted up, lift up his spear and said, this is the sharpest spear in the world. It can penetrate anything. So the people asked, what will happen if you attack your wonderful shield with your marvelous spear? The man cannot answer. Uh, I want to answer the mechanism issue with these two conceptions, the shield and the spear. Because in the UV H2O2 process, uh, it is the H2O2 absorb light to generate hydroxy radicals that attack the dyes. However, since the dyes have strong light absorbing abilities, it serves as an inner field effect. Inner field, that means it is unfavorable for the photolysis of H2O2 to generate hydroxy radicals. Therefore, its efficiency is low. In the UVA process, we saw both the dyes and the AA absorb light, absorb light to form excite plexus. Direct electron and energy transfer occur in the excite plexus. Therefore, the efficiency is high because this process is selective. Besides that, the Degree, the both AA and its degradation products are bio-friendly. Therefore, we uh, thought maybe we can use the UVA process as a pretreatment for bio-treatment. This will be revisited later. Okay, based on the high efficiency of the UVA process, we put forward uh, our viewpoint. AA is promising in what pollution can show. However, our peer reviewers uh, uh, have such concern, for, uh, including AA is extremely expensive, AA is very toxic, and AA might cause secondary pollution. So is this true? We uh, discussed these issues uh, from the aspects of price, toxicity, fit and the implication of AA. Here are the price of AA. We listed both the price of AA and hydrogen peroxide, uh, both their analytical grid and industrial grid. We can find that we can say the price of AA was a little bit higher than H2O2. For the total city, the toxicity of AA, according to the lesser dosage or lesser concentration, the toxicity of AA is comparable to hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this, uh, the about price and the toxicity about AA itself. We also checked the toxicity of the UVA treated solutions with plants, including rice and vegetable seeds and many definite. As summarized in this table, the toxicity of UVAA treated solutions is comparable to or even lower than that of the UV H2O2 treated solutions. So uh, we did another test to see whether we can use the UVA process to transform biorefractory contaminants to biodegradable products and then reduce the COD with cost-effective biotreatment. Here are the results. 
from the effluent COD, we can see the direct uh, activity the sludge treated solution and the UVAA treated solution uh, coupling with the SBR, the activity sludge, both can reduce the COD, but the color was much lower in the UVA treated solutions. Besides that, we also found the AA can use sunlight for contaminant degradation because the absorption spectrum of AA has a overlap with the sunlight. So uh, the first conclusion of this talk is the UVA process is promising as a pretreatment approach for further biotreatment of dying with water. Uh, this is a redox ladder of the six categories of important uh, redox couples in the environment. Uh, the, the one we circled are the contaminants we have already uh, tested. Uh, as shown here, the, 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 white, the white area shows the stability field of water. Both the oxidation reduction and the, both the oxidation potential and the reduction potential of AA was out of the stability field of water. However, in thermal dynamic system, we found that AA cannot react with those contaminants or proven chemicals. We know redox is determined by reduction potential. Here are the reduction potential of the contaminants we have tested. And these are the reduction potential of AA and the other three dye cartoon, other three two cartoons and the, their degradation products. So our question is, how does AA oxidize chemicals with much higher reduction potential? And how does the direct electron energy transfer occurs between the inside plexes? So we uh, analyzed the cyplexes and also the degradation products. You can see from this figure, the structure are very complicated. Therefore, we uh, thought why we do not test the simple uh, ones such as the arsenide and the nitrate. They have a very simple structure and a clear balanced state. So uh, here are the maps of arsenide and the nitrate provided by USGC. Yes, in groundwater, arsenic and nitrate coexist. Therefore, their redox conversions might be coexist. Uh, we tested the redox conversion of arsenide and the nitrate with the three Dicatrons and quinones, hydroquinones. And shown in this figure, the efficiency of the three dicatrons are much higher than the hydroquinone in the oxidation of arsenide. The beta quinone in the first six minutes nearly have no effect on the oxidation of arsenide. For the reduction of nitrate, the hydroquinone works a little bit better than the three dicatrons but the quinol efficiency is the lowest. In a few minutes, the arsenide was completely oxidized to arsenate. And we also compared the efficiency of the UVA process with the UVH2O2 process. As shown here, the diketones are more efficient than both quinols and H2O2 for the oxidation of arsenide. Uh, these uh, chi ratios show the enhancement caused by the addition of quinol and AA. And this one shows the consumption of quinol and AA in the conversion of arsenide. 
one fifth of a consumption led to a 125 times enhancement of arsenide oxidation. Therefore, we can say AA is a more efficient redox mediator than hydroquinone. In the arsenide nitrate binary system, we can see the UV AA system has a synergistic effect. However, the UV hydroquinone system does not have such a synergistic effect. We also observed the generation of hydrogen oxide in the oxidation of arsenide by the UVA process. The AA was degraded. The, the dissolved oxygen was consumed with the generation of hydrogen peroxide. Besides, there is no more consumption of AA in the oxidation of arsenide. Based on these observations, we pull forward the mechanism for the oxidation of arsenide in the UVA process. That is, on the UV irradiation, AA was excited to the triplet state, which, based on our quantum chemical calculation, has a very high reduction potential, can transfer electrons with the arsenide to form this radical. And this radical can then reduce oxygen to hydrogen peroxide, and then it come back to itself, uh, to the AA. This explains the oxidation of arsenide, and uh, we also explained the synergistic effect in the oxidation of arsenide and the nitrate by these two by these reaction pathways. Uh, Besides arsenide and nitrate, we also observed similar electron shuttling phenomena in the dye solution and the chromate solutions. As shown here, with the addition of AA, the decolorization of uh, azadine AO7 was significantly increased. However, with the inner presence of the dye, the degradation of AA was significantly reduced. The similar phenomenon was observed for the chromate solutions. Based on these experimental observations, we get our conclusion that is AA is an important photo-induced electron shuttle. Uh, the triplet AA, like the uh, like its mediator system, uh, uh, each way like the lattice AA, like the mediators. Uh, also, we can see that AA can facilitate the conversion of both organic and inorganic contaminants, like the azadines and arsenide nitrate. Okay, so far we discussed the UVA process. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we did the UVA process because we observed the photo-induced reversible sorption process. Uh, for the photo-induced reversible sorption, the zero gel are insoluble particles. Therefore, it can be used as absorbent. How about we prepare the zero gel that is soluble? That could be coagulant. Coagulation is an important process in water treatment. It can remove tiny suspended solid colloidal matter, micromolecule organic matter, bacteria and virus, metal ions, nutritional components, etc. The key in coagulation is coagulant. In the market, the most widely used coagulant are iron, and aluminum base. For the simple metal salt, they are useful, but sometimes they have many shortcomings, cannot meet the requirement. Therefore, polymeric salt were developed, and even the composites of different metals. Uh, even so, 
there are still some, some shortcomings in the current coagulants. Uh, for the alumina-based coagulant, the toxicity is a big problem. And for the iron-based coagulant, corrosivity and chroma are the two most important issues. And uh, for both the iron and aluminum coagulant, the disposal of sludge is still a problem. Besides that, low temperature and low turbidity is still a challenge in coagulation. So uh, we are titanium-based coagulant, uh, bad coagulant, then iron or aluminum. So far, the investigation on titanium-based coagulant is relatively failed because the price of titanium is higher than the other two metals. However, the titanium owns a higher charge, the flock is larger and easy to be settled. And the, slide, and the sludge might be used to produce the value-added TiO2 as a byproduct. In the application of the simple titanium salt, for example, titanium chloride, the effluent pH is very low. To solve this problem, the scientists developed the polytitanium chloride with the same approach used in the preparation of polymeric iron and polymeric uh, aluminum, that is, with base titration. Uh, with the developed PTC, the efficiency is improved, but it, it is still difficult to overcome the two issues, the low effluent pH and the short shelf life, because the pre polymerized titanium will gradually precipitate during the story. So we prepared the TiO2 zero gel coagulant still with, with the AA as a modifier in the soil gel process. As shown in this figure, Compared, compared with the uh, titanium chloride, the effluent pH of the TXC is much milder than the T, uh, T, uh, titanium chloride. And the flux formed by TXC has larger flux size and much wide applicable dosage and pH range than the TC and the PTC. Uh, the mechanism for the bad performance of TXC in coagulation could be explained by their structure. As shown by the TM structure, the TXC coagulant has flat sheet structure in solutions. And the TC and PTC are, have granular structure. The flat sheet structure with, versus the granular structure has several merits, including more content size for the contaminant, a bad entrapment, and the less residue metal. Here are the application of TXC in some uh, wastewater or water. The above sample shows the use of commercial polymeric iron chloride. The, if we filtrate the solution, there is no formation of flux with this coagulant. However, with the TXC, no matter the solution is filtrated or not, it can, always, it can always form good flux. Another test type with water show the same, uh, same phenomena. That means that TXC is efficient for low turbidity water. 
we also tested the TXC in chromium solutions. As I show here, the chromium solution is a colloidal system. After filtration, the concentration of chromium is 2.3. With the addition of PFC, the concentration in the silpanitans is still 2.2. But with the addition of TSC, the radio chromium concentration was reduced to 0 0.8 milligram per liter. Because the anchored AA in the TXC structure can work as a complexing, uh, complexing site for the chromium. We also tested the application of TXC in algae water. No matter for the water of low turbidity or higher turbidity, the TXC can form good flux in algae water. Beside that, one important point is with the TXC as coagulant, we can see the micro system MC increased first, but then reduced gradually with the storage of the solution. However, with the other two coagulants, PLC polymeric iron sulfate and the polyaluminum chloride, the MC concentration were steadily increased. The reason is because the AA leached from the TXC can degrade the MC on light irradiation. So the merit of the TXC in treatment of algae water is it not only efficient in removal of algae, but also can reduce the toxic metabolite products, MCLR. So our conclusion on the coagulant section is the titanium zero gel coagulant overcome the shortages of titanium based inorganic coagulants. The TXC exhibited higher coagulation efficiency, including wide applicable pH and dose, dose range, low residue metal concentration, and large flux size and fast settling. And the TSC could remove varied contaminants. The LG bloom is a serious issue worldwide. If we can use the TXC to remove the LG, and since the AA in the TXC can work on the sunlight, is it possible to control the LG blooming by the addition of TSC? I, I think maybe it deserves a try. <clears throat> okay. Uh, for my whole lecture, my concluding remarks are AA has good electric shuttling ability. This is uh, in the terms of electric transfer. Uh, AA is a useful modifier in material preparation because of its complexation ability. We can use it to prepare zero gels as an adsorbent or as coagulant. If we combine the electron transfer and the complexation ability of AA together, maybe we can make more. Uh, here is one conception I proposed. Uh, we can use the TXC to do co uh, coagulation to make the water more penetration for the UV light and, and to remove both the turbidity and the suspended solid and then we can use the UVAA process to transform the biorefractory contaminants 
to biodegradable ones, then we can use activated sludge to reduce the COD. This just a uh, hypothesis. We need more work on it. Okay, I would like to thank the National Natural Science Foundation of China for the support. Most of my work was funded by NSFC. Uh, thank you for your listening and uh, welcome to contact me if you have any questions. Okay, Professor Zhang, thank you very much. It's very interesting talk on a very interesting chemical. So basically now we know what is AA and also it's many applications in the water treatment. So any questions from the students or audience? So basically, do you have think about any real application, maybe in the like the dye wastewater for some real um tech, I mean, in the, some wastewater treatment plants? We have ever thought about this, but I have have haven't ever tried uh in a pilot skill. Uh -huh. Maybe sometime we we will do this. Yeah, I think it could be very interesting to 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 have this technology. Maybe have some area which can very suitable to use this. Um, okay, there's a question on the uh, talk. Did you see it? Shu Juan, did you see there is a question? Did you find it? Liao Tian. Mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't see it, I can read it for you. So thank you for this interesting oh. talk. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Oh, okay. Yes, that's the question. Thank you for this interesting talk. If I remember it correctly, you said that AA can facilitate the conversion of organic contaminants in visual treatment. Could you specify which organic contaminants? Do you know the potential for agriculture-related chemicals? Uh, so far for the organic contaminants, uh, the most efficient one are dyes. We tested about uh, 60 dyes. Most of them, it works better than the hydrogen peroxide. But for the agriculture-related chemicals, we tried uh, some herbicide or PPCP. We have ever uh, did some PPCP. Uh, the efficiency for PPCP are not better than hydrogen peroxide. That's uh, the reason why I proposed the light absorbing property of the contaminant was useful in the UVA process. Uh, but now since we also observed the UVA process was much more efficient than hydrogen peroxide in the oxidation of arsenide, uh, the arsenide was also has very poor light absorbing properties. So I'm not sure uh, which kind of uh, structure are most, are most suitable for the UVA treatment. Therefore, we are doing uh, work about the QSA quantitative structure activity relationship is ongoing. Uh, what will AA become after UV irradiation? Uh, mm. the, most, uh, the decomposed AA will be transferred to acetic acid, formic acid. Do you think about using sunlight irradiation? Yes, we have tried. The UV, AA, the, the AA can, can directly use sunlight. Uh, its efficiency is uh, 
the word Z, the UV light, because we use a media pressure mercury lamp as the light source in UVA process, uh, it has strong UVC emission in the media pressure mercury lamp. But for the sunlight, uh, since the overlap between the UV absorb absorption and the sunlight irradiation, it can the AA can work on the sunlight irradiation. But the efficiency is lower than the media pre, uh, medium pressure mercury, mercury lamp. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, if you have further questions, please contact Professor John by the email provided at, on the last slides. So yes. thank you very much. I really expect, expect your achievements in this area. Also look forward to your real applications in the water pollution control. Thank you so much for the talk. Thank you, Xin. Thank you. And also our last talk will be next Wednesday at the same time. Uh, will be Andrew from uh, Edinburgh University. So that will be our last lecture. So hope to see you next week. Thank you. Thank you then. Thank you. Bye. Bye.